World Prematurity Day was this week, a global movement to raise awareness of premature birth and sometimes devastating, uh, the devastating impact that it can have on families. For every 13 babies born in the UK, one baby is born premature. Each neonatal experience will affect families differently and many of the experiences of neonatal care can go unspoken from the overwhelming sounds of the ward to discovering how strong your baby is for the first time after watching their fight for life. Uh, now, this is a very um, important story for me as well because my little son, Ivory, was born at 28 weeks and three days. There he is now. Uh, basically, I had what was called pre-eclampsia, but it was actually eclampsia with liver failure, kidney failure, all the failures. And um, that's me with Ivory after he managed to uh, get through the whole breathing mechanisms and everything else like that. And it is literally a step of things and processes that they go through until they reach the full term. So we spent almost 12 years at the neonatal uh, award. So I'm joined now by Marsha Davies, who is the mother of four premature children and the founder of Little Miracles, a charity which supports families of unwell infants across the UK. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I've got to say, I mean, I've been through it once. You've been through it four times. Marsha, tell me a little bit about um, your story. Um, my eldest, um, she was born only four weeks early, so it wasn't anything major, but she caught strep B meningitis whilst on the ward. So um, she was in intensive care for three weeks. Um, then I had Ben, who was 29 weeks, then followed by Reese, 27 weeks, and my daughter, Elna, at 25 weeks, which um, that was the most horrendous one of all. That was really touch and go. Now, the thing is with uh, premature babies, and, and the thing is that what they don't tell you, because you go and you do all the, the, the classes and everything, and nobody mentions that, oh, by the way, if it comes out a little bit early, then there's this whole section of the hospital that you may never have seen or never heard of before, and there's this whole experience that you may well have to go through. Nobody mentions any of that. After your first three who were premature, were you prepared for the, the, the fourth one that was premature? And was there any reason why the babies kept coming out slightly early? No, there's different reasons every time. And um, mostly my, my you know, uterus just ruptures. But with I think you're right, definitely, in that there's no there's no scope for anyone knowing that neonatal units exist. You know, you don't know until you're actually there and you're thrown into the deep end. And um, with my youngest, the hospital wouldn't actually even tolerate my pregnancy. They said, you know, you're not gonna make it, so there's no point in seeing you. And then um, when she was born at 25 weeks, I mean, I've been there three times before and I think that, you know, I know exactly how, how this is going to go. And it was a complete different ball game. whereas there's a difference when you've got a bit of hope, but I had no hope at all with the 25-week one. I thought, this is it, she's not going to survive. And I think as a parent, that's the most devastating thing you can ever go through. You know, watching your baby cling to life on life support, knowing there's nothing you can do. Your whole entire life is literally in the hands of the nurses and doctors. They're quite... And the thing is, what people don't realise is those nurses and doctors are quite incredible. And they treat each of those babies like kings and queens. They literally do. And each one is, you know, you wouldn't know that they weren't their children. And one of the things that really fascinated me was the fact that Ivory was so small, but yet he had all these, he had cannulas, two in each arm, something in his leg, this, that and the other. I mean, there he was, all of that going on. He had this breathing thing on him, which stayed on him for about six or seven weeks. And he still kept going. If this was me as an adult, I'd be like, oh, just finish me off. I've had enough of this. But they just keep, they just kept going. And it's so amazing to see them when they actually, you know, they're out there and they survive. Um, with the, when they are premature, though, it's more that they... Your, your last one was very, very early, right? So that, that's... And sometimes, if it's earlier, sometimes they won't actually give them breathing apparatus and they want to see if they'll survive. Did, did your youngest end up with any level of disability? Because that's, that's the fear, isn't it? They can keep them alive, but it's, it's how the outcome, ultimately. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I mean, she did incredible. You know, they, they have this phrase, fight like a preemie, and it's absolutely right. You wouldn't see an adult fight as hard as these babies fight. But um, luckily, the only thing that she has wrong with her is she's got a condition called ROP, so where her um, the nerves in her eyeballs hadn't, hadn't attached. So she was two pound old, two pound in weight, having, um, having microsurgery, and her eyesight's really bad. But 
she never complains. She wears, you know, big thick glasses. And um, she even wears them to sleep because she's scared if she wakes up, she can't see. But the lovely thing is not once does she ever complain about it. And, you know, the fact that that's all that's wrong with her, you know, I'm incredibly grateful. Yeah, it's uh, and the support that you got, uh, what was that like? I know there's a very important charity, Bliss, who do help a lot. What kind of support did you receive? I think I felt like, I mean, the reason why I set the charity in the first place was because I was sat by her incubator, you know, nothing you can do, you know. And um, and I, I just found that I didn't feel like there was any support. The nurses were fantastic. They were, they were my biggest support network. And other parents, you know, you become best friends with these absolute strangers because you have something in common. But I didn't feel like there was enough support. And, um, and that's why I set the charity, because I thought, you know what, if I can just help one of the parents, and it's nobled out of necessity. And now we have this huge community where there's, you know, thousands of women right now all over the country that have got the babies in the natal units, and they all talk to each other online, so they can be sat by an incubator having the worst day of their life, and they'll, you know, they'll, they'll put a little rant, or they'll say, ask for advice, has anyone else gone through this? And, you know, hundreds of other women will support them and pick them back up on their worst days. And I think that is the biggest, best thing for parents right now. So if you need help, if you need support, just go and ask for it. It's out there. It's definitely out there. Mm. And in terms of now, do you still receive support? Because I know I've got a lot of support ongoing for at least a full solid two years. Um, is that support still ongoing? I think it depends where you are in the country. You know, the NHS is so underfunded and um, it's not it's not that people don't try and help, but in certain areas that, that support's not available. And um, and I think that's the, the, the incredible thing about people paying it forward and helping other parents out. But um, yeah, I just think, no, I feel like the support for the children ongoing is incredible. You know, the, they constantly have doctor's appointments, you know, pediatricians constantly checking on them, making sure they're hitting the milestones and what have you. But I think the parent support and ongoing, you know, lots, so many parents have PTSD and, um, and real issues after having a premature baby because it's probably the toughest thing they ever go through. But I don't think there's enough support to help, to help them ongoing. It's almost like once you've once your baby's going home, that's it. Your the job's done as far as a parent's concerned. You know, you take over and you deal with it, and um, and that's almost there should be more support there for that. Yeah, it's true. It's traumatizing. And then, but then the thing is, you you you've had three, and then you went for a fourth, having been through the first three experiences, which um, some parents don't want to ever do that again. If people want to find out more about the charity, and you know, they can get in touch with you. Um, where where can they find you? Oh, well, we have our support networks on social media, but we also have a website, www.littlemiracles.org.uk, and they can access everything they need from there. And if we can't help, then we can sign posts to other organisations, like you said, as Bliss, which is amazing. Well, listen, Marsha, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for sharing your story.